over the last few years, there have been a lot of women that have come into the industry. Um, we live in a male-dominant society, whether we like it or not. Um, and it's a very male-dominant industry, again, whether we like it or not. There have been so many women that have jumped on board into this industry and have made changes. My issue lies is that most of these women are actresses. Maybe this is because um, it's every little girl's dream to, uh, to become an actress and I salute these women for, for making that dream possible and for breaking all taboos and all cultural norms to push themselves to reach their passion and become actresses. But I think that the greater change is going to happen when more women become part of the industry in terms of filmmakers, writers, directors, producers, um, and, and even all the technical aspects. Because really, at the end of the day, we're a bunch of women acting a male's vision through his script. So where is really the change coming from? It's coming from the male perspective. And I understand that to be a script writer, most script writers that I have met, have worked with and have read their work, tend to be very balanced human beings that understand um, the female perspective, perspective that um, do not, um, that are not misogynist, that do not uh, um, push down women, dumb down women through their roles, but at the, end of the, at the end of the day, to write a story for a woman, what better or who better to write it than a woman? Um, who, better than, who better than a woman to direct a woman? No matter how much a man tries, and, and I salute again, this is with all due respect to all the male uh, directors or scriptwriters out there, but it's all a male perspective. It's all male understanding of women. But if you have a woman in this industry, as a scriptwriter, as a producer, as a director, that's a, that's a whole different story. That's a whole different ballgame. So there are very few women who uh, are part of the industry behind the camera. And I think that's really where the problem lies. And I'm so proud that one of the women that is now working in Egypt, in this industry, is my little sister. And I love that about her. Um, she radiates power. And I know that one day she is going to be of that change. That she's going to be a change maker. She's going to be a factor. And she's going to use her agency to move this industry in a more balanced direction. I never want this industry to be more pro-women than it is men, because it's not, it's not about that. It's all about balance. So what I would love, and what I would love to see this industry reach one day, is for there to be an equal amount of men and women working in this industry, both on screen and off screen. I don't think that women should feel inferior about coming in, stepping in to the more business side of, of this industry. Um, I think that maybe women in general in Egypt need to, and it really, you can track this back from like into parenthood and how they were raised, is to believe that they can make a change. Women can make a change. Um, you do not need to feel inferior even if you feel that it is a male, a male dominant society or a male dominant industry, you will always present something new. And you just need to believe that. Most of the women who have entered this field um, off screen have become extremely successful. Um, not only in Egypt, but in the Arab world in general. Yes, some fantastic Egyptian directors. Kamla Bouzikri is someone I would love to work with one day. And I've seen her work and she's incredible. Nadine Labaki is definitely someone I'd like to work with one day. And so on and so forth, and the list goes on. And it's, I mean, 
I look up to women like that, you know, who, who maybe it's a little easier for an actress to get into this business than it is for someone to get into the business side or the filmmaker side of it. Film is a means of communicating to people and to reach masses of people that you do not necessarily have the chance to have conversations with on a daily basis. Um, the more that female narratives are repressed, are disrespected, are not discussed openly, this means that we are um, enlarging the gap between women and the rest of the world because you are not using the one means that, that is very clearly available for everyone to communicate, for a woman to communicate. But I don't believe that there are enough films at all that are made discussing women's issues. And it doesn't necessarily need to be about women's health issues, I mean that's one of them, but what about what about uh, relationship issues? What about um, social issues? What about financial issues? I mean, the, the, we're people and we deserve a voice and we need someone to give us the chance and the space to discuss that and to send our message out there, whatever it may be. And it doesn't need to be a health message because I don't really like movies that portray women as being the damsel in distress. That's not exactly what we are and that's not what we're made of. Um, we do have moments of, of weakness, but so does everybody, so does a man. And, and any man who says that he doesn't have moments of weakness is a liar. <laughs> so, <coughs> we need more films to discuss things that are closer to our heart, things that go through our mind, and things that we live and experience every day. I, I commend Hinda Sabri for the role that she did in Asme. I think it's great, but that's like the one film that came to my mind right now. And this is... That's a problem. If I can only think of one film that dealt with an issue and it happened to be the character of a woman. Because at the end of the day, this film can be about HIV, but through the eyes of a man. The more that women's issues are not being discussed, the more that they are being misrepresented, disrespected, not put on the table, um, covered, veiled, then this is only going to uh, create a larger gap between the truth about women and their issues and the rest of the world. And it would be so unfortunate to miss out on this opportunity of creating films that can truly portray women's voices to reach masses. Because what better way than to reach someone than through art? And this means it's available, but people are not using it enough. So I, I, I hope and I dream that women would be able to one day focus a lot more on their own issues and portray that in a thousand and one artistic ways um, through film, through stories, through storytelling, through characters that people can relate to, to better show their issues. And, and the thing is, you know, it's not only about issues. Like, I just don't, I don't want to portray women as you know, a bunch of hormonal people who have issues that they want to talk about. That's not, that's not what we are. Um, when I say issues, I say this, in, I say this and I mean, I mean feelings and thoughts and, uh, and uh, heroines and success stories and pain and, and so on about just stories that, uh, that need to be heard. I think that uh, in the film industry now, you really do have all shapes and sizes and colors and, and everything. Um, I think that women recently, over the last few years, are starting to um, really own it and own who they are. And we are all different. And I think that the greater objective of women nowadays should be health and not image. Um, I think that is what people and what we as actresses need to start implementing in our thoughts and carrying across through um, discussions that we have or 
this should be the main message is acceptance and accepting to be different and diversity definitely um, I, I think that we're actually all very different um, I I don't think necessarily that Egypt is, uh, or Egyptian actresses at least, are very greatly influenced by the, the you know, Western media when it comes to uh, body shapes or look because we know that we're so different. Uh, how many, how many women in, include, I mean, not even actresses, but how many women in general have traveled abroad, Egyptian women, and have gotten told, oh my God, you're so beautiful, you look like Cleopatra. Every single one of us at some point in our lives got that, you know? And, and if we just hold on to that and understand that we, we need to accept who we are, we need to accept, um, we need to own our own beauty, and if we just carry that with us, that's really going to make all the difference. I'm, I'm new to this, it's only been 10 years that I've been in this industry, I don't know what it was like before, uh, before that. Um, right now I can only speak uh, on my own behalf that I have not felt that. But then again, financials are not really an issue that I discuss with anyone, so I would not necessarily be put in a situation where I'm speaking to a man and saying, how much did you take for this film, you know, like, that's not really how it works. But I don't think that financials really play an issue in this, in this industry. I may be wrong. Uh, this worldly movement of Me Too um, and Time's Up resonated so much in Egypt specifically. Um, I've had repeated discussions with friends who live abroad and I have told them and asked them and they have asked me what's it like in Egypt and I would send them screenshots of my Facebook news feed of the amount of women that said me too, me too, me too, me too, hashtag me too and it was um, it was unbelievable and the energy that came out of it was both saddening at the reality that hit but so powerful that we all as women stand united together and feel the same thing and are willing to stand up and say we no longer accept this. I think Me Too may have resonated a bit more in Egypt than Time's Up. I feel that um, uh, Time's Up, and I may be wrong, may have come out of a more racial discrimination issue um, or gender equality, but also it was uh, laced with uh, uh, racial discrimination, which I don't think is as big an issue here in Egypt as sexual harassment. I think that we, and I, I, I kept thinking about this, I think that we are a more classist society than a racist society. And I think they're both two disasters that need to be dealt with in the world, but um, different cultures uh, breed different things and different feelings. And uh, I mean, in a utopian world, none of this would ever exist, but in a realistic world, the women are going to stop this.